Welcome to episode 13 of Area 69, After Dark. All right, Queen, so we are officially on episode 13 of Area 69, which means that we have been doing this podcast for about three months now, which is insane for me to like think and process because it feels like it hasn't been that long since we started the podcast but girl y'all have been loving it and you know I always thank you guys all the time but thank you because your guys' support on the show really is what motivates me to push forward and just continue this because girl when I tell you that it gets hard with the guests it definitely is hard because I have had a lot of your guys' favorite influencers say that they're down and then they ghost me so I'm like oh, okay <laughs> like it's cool I know we're all busy and stuff but it does get a little bit hard to bring guests on but the guests that we do have on the guests that are down to come on are super freaking iconic iconic and I really really appreciate everyone that has been down to come on the podcast because that means a lot you know it, it means a lot like trust me girl it's kind of scary even for me to be like hi like would you like to be on area 69 like girl it's scary okay so I'm super hyped about tonight's guest because he does it all girl like I found him on tiktok and you know speaking about tiktok really quick um, have you guys seen that supposedly TikTok is going to get banned within nine months? Uh, girl, that's kind of scary because there is so many creative, unique people that I have found through TikTok. Um, a lot of small businesses are popping and booming now because of TikTok. So, you know, hearing that, I mean, I don't I'm not political or anything like that. Like, I don't know anything about politics. The only reason why I know about any of this is because of TikTok. I'm politically educated through TikTok, which isn't really a good thing. But I mean, I'm just being 100 percent with you guys. I don't really keep up with that stuff. But um, yeah, so I guess it's now just up to Joe Biden to decide if TikTok is going to stay or not. I don't know, girl. I'm really going based off of what I saw online, but yeah, that's kind of a little bit disheartening because I feel like there's so many iconic people on TikTok that aren't necessarily on Instagram or YouTube or Snapchat or anything like that. So I guess I'm definitely curious to see what the new platform is going to be if TikTok does, you know, go away. But fingers crossed. I hope not, because like I said, tonight's guest, I actually did find him on TikTok and he is a freaking icon okay every single guest that I have on is an icon in their own unique way but he does it all girl so he legit is a makeup artist he's a nail tech he's a hairstylist he's a dad he's a brand owner he's a hubby like girl what like how do you do it all like how do you how do you do that I don't know. So we're definitely going to be asking him tonight because that's impressive, girl. I'm definitely impressed. And shout out to his wifey because, girl, girl, like you have a makeup artist, hairstylist, nail tech for life. <laughs> that's iconic, girl. That's totally iconic. So with that being said, today's special guest is the Blinking. For you natural bitches out there, you might like this. Oh my god you guys get a lot of product omg yo you know i had to get my wifey already look at this y'all she looks so fucking gorgeous how the fuck did i do people always coming at me like oh my god you're gonna look really plastic you're gonna look fake but that's exactly how i want to look plastic and fake yo we went zip lining you guys with the kids and look at me Hi, Keith. Hello. How hello, are hello. You? I'm doing good. I'm so happy to have you on today. I'm excited. I'm nervous. And this is his first podcast. Yes, first podcast. <laughs> yeah. And how are you feeling? A little nervous. Nervous. Excited, though. Let's see what we get into, right? Yeah. We're going to be talking about a lot today, okay? You do it all. You do, do. it fucking all. Thank like, you. I was telling them before you got here, I was like, dude, he's a nail tech, he's a makeup artist, he's a hubby, he's a dad, he's a brand owner. You also yes. own a store, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Store owner in San Diego? In San Diego. Dude, yep. that's fucking sickening. Yeah, it's small. It's only for me, but it's it's cool. This is where my um, all my customers come. They shop oh, in. okay. They purchase their stuff, and they also do order pickups there, too. That's and iconic. that's actually the same place where I do my nails and makeup and all that. Oh, so it's literally mm -hmm. like your salon yeah. slash store slash warehouse kind of yep. type vibe. Mm -hmm. That's iconic. So, 
whenever I have guests on, I like to allow them to kind of introduce themselves. So, who is the Blinking? Well, the Blinking. <laughs> You're like, there's a lot to me, There's girl. a lot to me. So, <laughs> who am I? I? My name is Junior, by the way, but yes. I go by the Blinking. That's how everyone knows me. Um, I have four kids. I am a hubby. Um, and uh, I am a makeup artist, an entrepreneur, um, a nail tech. Um, I'm trying to do it all. You know, I'm, I'm really trying to do it all. I was a dancer, too. So now that I lost all this dancer. weight. Yeah, I was a like dancer. Like what type of dancer? Everything. I did uh, contemporary, hip-hop, everything. Really? Yeah, so I was really good. And depression took it mm, from me. Okay. So now yeah. that I lost a lot of weight, I'm actually, once I recover, I'm going back to dance. So That's iconic. So, yeah. That's mm -hmm. super iconic I was iconic actually my hear. first love. <laughs> really? Yeah, and singing, too. Singing was my first. You sing, too? Yeah, I used to sing. Mm -hmm. Girl, Dude, really? I, I used to sing. Can you yeah. sing a little? No. Yeah. I'm nervous. <laughs> now it's okay we'll warm up to it okay yeah. but i didn't know that about you yeah i knew yeah, that you i had seen in. like a tiktok that you did about you being a dancer or mm -hmm. something like that but i didn't know you sing yeah i used to sing yeah i really did like when you were younger or? yeah when i was younger i actually used to sing in church so oh, that's what started shit. the, the yeah. whole thing but things happened and yeah, just so. life just life shit yeah. happens mm -hmm. yeah but you have four kids four kids and how old are they dude they're eight seven six and then three Two boys, two girls. Mm. I could barely do with one. He is a handful. How is yeah. that for you? Dude, it, it's crazy. But you know what? I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. You know, like having them all seguidos is so perfect. Like they are their best friends. Once they other. grow they, up, mm -hmm. it makes it iconic, right? It, oh, hell yeah. See, we go, we take them everywhere now and they, How have, cute. they have fun. And they all have like their own little personalities they do. and stuff. Yes. My daughter is my twin though. <laughs> oh yeah. She'll be she'll be Which of the two daughters? Uh my oldest daughter. Ariel. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Oh dude, that's crazy. Would you stay with the kids all the time? Actually, no. I actually was working we both were actually working full time before social media took off. Oh really? Yeah, but we would actually switch. So I would work mm. day. I had a nine to five. Right. Well, I had a six to two. 2 30 and then she would take four to about midnight or 1 a.m so you guys would literally switch off literally switch off because you know i didn't trust nobody to take care of my of kids of course i'm know, the same so. way i'm the same so. way i'm like girl my head is about to explode but it's okay i'd rather have my head explode than fucking have someone random take care of my son because that shit's scary dude. it is it's scary you hear so many crazy ass stories that it's like no thank you very true uh-uh but that's iconic you know kudos to you for making it work and kudos to your wife as yeah. well because that's hard yeah it was very hard our relationship was like taking a, a toll of course. When, in that time, because we didn't see each other. We really didn't see each I other. I mean, dude, it's like you mm -hmm. kind of lose yourself yeah. and your relationships yeah. and shit. That shit's hard. Yeah, we, we made it through, so that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, dude. I feel like that's when you know when a relationship is really, like, meaningful. Because, I mean, it's through thick and thin. It is. It is through, through thick, thick and, and thin. Literally, thick yeah. and thin. <laughs> like, thick, 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 thick. Yeah, bitch, yeah, yes. girl. Yeah. A lot of shit. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like having kids is just such a big, life-changing moment that like dude it's so unpredictable you don't even know what the fuck like i feel like i honestly don't even know shit about being a mom yet because my son is still really little i feel like the trouble comes when they're older right yeah, that's or true no that, that is very true okay. very true yeah but for for us like we learned really quick because we had to, we, we had, had to choice. we had no other choice we yeah. had literally back to back you know right. like literally so that's how it is. And were they all planned or? My first one, Ariel, <laughs> she was not planned, but okay. it was more of a, you like know if what? It happens, if it, it happens, happens, it happens. Right. I've always wanted to be a dad though, ever since I was a child. Really? I, I already, I knew I wanted to be a dad and I, I've always wanted to. Uh-huh. Always. I'm the opposite. Really? I never wanted oh. kids. So yeah. it was an accident? No, he wasn't no? an accident no? oh, until okay. I met my man. Because oh, my man okay. comes from a family of 10. Okay. Damn. He has yeah. 10 siblings. Mm. Okay. Um, and he's super like family oriented and, you know, seeing him with his nephews and his nieces and his siblings, it honestly really like changed my mind entirely. Mm. I was like, oh my God, that's kind of hot that he's so like family oriented. You know what I mean? That's dope like, that you could even change your mind be because of him. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Like dude, because of him. Like seeing the love that he has for kids, it was just kind of like, oh shit, maybe not all men are assholes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's when I was like, okay, you know, I'm open to having a kid with you. And we got pregnant right a fucking away, girl. Dang. Right away. But, but that's dope. That's dope that you did it in that way, you yeah. know, and you're able to switch your mindset about kids. He switched my mindset. Yeah. He did that's a thousand dope. percent. And now I'm just so thankful because my child, dude, is my everything. Like, honestly, like before having him, I was depressed. I didn't know what the fuck to do with my life, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You already know how that is, yep. you know? Um, and when I had him, don't get me wrong, I was still depressed and shit, but he changed my mindset in in the sense where it's like, I have to work hard. I have to make my life now. I have to think ahead. I have to like, girl, we only have one life to live. It's true. One life to live. You can't just fucking stay stuck in your depressed ass like situation. And it's really only up to you to get yourself out of that shit it's true um and i get a lot of backlash um by this but mm-hmm. i've been in therapy for like six years right you get backlash for being in therapy well no because what, what i'm about to say how what oh, you're okay. talking about about uh-huh. depression um sometimes it's it's all about mindset yes depression is all about mindset it and is. it's it's sort of a choice and a lot of people don't like when i say that because obviously they're not there yet right you know so it's right. hard for people to hear that and be like, and I get attacked because they're, they're always like, how can you say that? I'm right. going through depression and you're saying it's my fault. It's not your fault. But what you got to do is once you realize you're in the depression, you got to do something about it. Yeah. You can't stay and dwell on it. Otherwise, you're, that's how your life You'll is going to go. You'll be stuck there. Yeah, you're going to be stuck. For sure. I mean, honestly, like, obviously, that's going to hurt someone to hear if they're going through that in that moment. But like you said, at the end of the day, dude, it's only up to you. Yeah. Like, if you, nobody's going to come save you. Put it that way. No one is going to come save you. So if you really get once you get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm depressed. I need to, you know, get my shit together. Dude, it's like day and night. Like your life will instantly change in a matter of seconds because you're like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done feeling like this. I'm sick of it. Uh, I deserve better. My partner deserves better. My family deserves better. Whatever, you know, but but yeah, dude, it's very true because that's exactly what happened to me. So yeah. I was working nine to five and I was depressed as shit. I was diagnosed with major uh, depression really? or yeah, I had major depression. I um, had PTSD, anxiety. I had a lot of shit. And then not only that, I actually had a learning disability growing up. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was all in these special classes, which made it worse. So what did you grow up with? Um, ADHD, oh, um, dyslexic. Okay. Um, I was oh, on really? the, uh, yeah, I was on the spectrum too, but actually like autistic uh close to it i was borderline oh, okay. yeah um i was close to there you know uh-huh. but my parents didn't want to let it get there right so they put me into like um into special classes right but long story short um i realized that it, i actually didn't have a learning disability it was all about my childhood mm, like the trauma it was all, all about trauma and like the neglect of it oh, all you know what shit. i mean so yeah. it wasn't really about having like the having, learning disability right, it was right. more about what was happening at home mm-hmm. if that makes sense well, I'm happy that, yeah. well, I hope that you're like out of that oh, yeah. mindset now. Oh, yeah. I had to get out of there. You yeah. have to. I have Especially, to. I have kids. You right. Know? And my first one, Ariel, which is my oldest, she's eight. Um, I think the first two kids that I had was my worst years. You know, so I woke up one day and like how you said, I was like, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I am done. Mm-hmm. I was 320 pounds. so i yeah that's how like depression took me there like literally took me there so i've been through it and i know what it takes to get out of the depression you know what i mean and so that's why i talk a a lot about and actually that's why i went viral on social media oh really was because of all of my mental health on videos those Uh are the ones that went viral but at the end of the day as long as you're spreading like good positive like advice real advice because it's not it might not make you feel good all the time but and it's not I supposed mean, to. If, if exactly. it, healing is not supposed to make you feel good, comfort is not where you want to be. Healing is uncomfortable. Yeah, one thousand percent. That's mm-hmm. growth. It is. It's fair. It's that's, growth. That's, that's how you're gonna grow. You're not gonna grow if you stay in the same place. If you're too comfortable, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, dude. I saw that you met Jeffrey Star the other yeah. day. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? It like, was dope. But well, he was actually having a, like a, a warehouse like sale. Oh, okay. You know, so then anybody could pop up and go, and yeah. I was already gonna be over there. So I was like, you know what? Where? Um, in L.A. area. Oh, I was gonna okay. be in L.A. or and and Chino too, because mm-hmm. I was here for like a couple days. And so I was like, hell yeah, let's go. And I took wifey, I took the kids. Um, and it was dope. He was actually very nice. And I was actually very surprised that he knew who, who the fuck I was. 
I saw that he used your like, little powder puff thing. I know he used that's my powder puff. That's sickening. That's, it's dope. Yeah, I gifted him a whole box, you know, that day. I love the powder was, puff, by the way. Yeah, I use it every you. day. Thank yeah, I, I brought do. I brought you a gift. Oh, really? I, oh, stop I brought you a whole box. It. Iconic. Yes. Dude, that's sickening, though. Mm-hmm. For him to use your product yeah, in dope. a video, mm-hmm. yeah, that's like heartwarming. Yeah, for it, sure. it is, especially I've been doing it for 10 years and to finally get recognized, especially by you guys, too. 10 years. I've been doing it for 10 years. I didn't pop off until like a year and a half ago maybe wow yeah on tiktok on tiktok and on instagram Mm -hmm. wow for like the reels and stuff yeah the reels okay Mm -hmm. that's iconic dude it's it's really social media is genuinely like it's so hard because you can't lose faith and you kind of just have to wait for your moment like you really do just have to wait for your moment I mean, you just said it. You yeah. barely popped off. I barely popped off. A year ago. Yeah, and I got dis- discouraged for a lot of yeah. um, years. You know, I did it for 10 years. And when pandemic hit, mm. that's when I literally just went even more in a deeper depression because I was like, oh, this is my moment. I, I have right. all the time in the world. Um, and I wasn't popping off. You know, I was not. That and I hurts. was trying. Yeah. yeah. And I was trying and trying. And everybody knew. And um, finally, I had my moment. But it was after I got surgery, <laughs> mm. you know, so it wasn't the until I got surgery is when I popped off. Do you feel like. How do I say this? Um, do you feel like people started to treat you differently once you got your surgery? One thousand percent. One thousand sucks because it's true. It's Very true. true. Yeah. And I didn't have surgery because of it, you know, because, yeah, of, you, you know, did I didn't um, because I actually stopped posting on YouTube and on all platforms for about like a year. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, I, I went on like a hiatus because I needed to work. I needed to provide for all my kids. Right. And uh, until I had my surgery, that's when I really popped off. And the reason why I got my surgery was because I was pre-diabetic. Mm-hmm. I was having a lot of complications with my health. I was 320 pounds at my heaviest. Wow. Huge. I was huge. Um, I couldn't even be with my kids like in the park. I would. Like you would get too tired. Yeah, I would get stuff. too tired. I was sleeping I can't even all the time. You at that weight. Yeah. No, That's I'll show crazy. you. That's crazy. But um, yeah, so I couldn't do a lot of shit with my kids. And, oh. and I a lot of cars on there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Go okay. ahead. And I couldn't do a lot of shit with my kids. And that's when I really was like, I need to do something. Because it was years. I said, oh, you know how all of us say New Year's resolution. We're yeah. going to lose weight. And We're it never do happens. It. <laughs> yeah, and it never happens. And um, because of my health yeah. and where I was, I couldn't even lose the weight. It was so hard. So you I got the, what, like bypass? Yeah, I got the gastric sleeve, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got the I gastric sleeve. I don't know the sleeve. difference between the So two. the gastric sleeve is when they cut 80% of your stomach out. Oh, shit. So they only leave, yeah, so they only leave 20%. 20%? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. When I um they showed me the picture of my stomach, it was huge, the amount that they cut off. But um, actually, we're supposed to eat literally a little bit. No, we and, are. And, and that's yeah. why I gained so much weight, literally damn was it hard for you to like get used to your new stomach yes definitely especially going from eating dude i would go to mcdonald's or wherever the hell i was going i would get a large fry eat my own large fry i would get two burgers i would get a shake i i I wouldn't stop like i was horrible you know and but at the same time that was like what was keeping me comfortable right yeah you know what i mean yeah eating was my um way of feeling better or you know whatever you want to call it but it was definitely hard to get better that than like drugs oh definitely you know i mean not that that's good either but you know i mean i feel like even myself i have a unhealthy relationship with food like some days like i'll be down to like you know grub out and then some days i'm like no i can't because then i'm gonna gain weight or yeah. something it's just that's something that i'm kind of working on you know and then also with the baby like girl i don't even have time to eat so i'm like eh, that's okay <laughs> that's okay i'll just starve <laughs> yeah dude but that's crazy yeah and then you recently got surgery again i actually got surgery six months ago because after gastric sleeve i lost about 180 pounds Damn. so i lost a lot of weight and i had really flabby skin mm-hmm. so six months ago i actually got a bbl a tummy tuck and lipo um but they Ouch. couldn't yeah it, it was it was a big surgery you know but i needed it you know but you look like you were healing like nothing dude yeah but you I know would what see they you say? posting and stuff mm-hmm. and i was like how is he walking how girl yeah i think it's because my mom almost died when she got her tummy tuck oh, shit. she got blood clots oh. so you know seeing Isn't how she you, older she's um i think she was about maybe 50 
50, maybe 40 ish mm. when she got her surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely older, but yeah, like seeing you recover, I was like, damn, he's healing like nothing. You know what? My doctor actually told me that men just heal a lot better it. and faster. Yeah. A lot, you know, like unfortunately for women. Yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah. Because me for the BBL, I would love to get another one, but I don't think I am down for that again. I had the worst like experience healing. Shit. Did you get like the massages and stuff? Yeah, I did. I actually got the massages. Um, did you and- cry? No, actually, it didn't hurt. Uh, to be honest, I swear, I had for the first surgery and my the most recent that yeah. I had two weeks ago, literally two so, weeks ago. So what did you get two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, I got a BBL and lipo because can yeah. you sit down? Yeah. Do you well, want a booty pillow? No, I actually want to get rid of some of it. Your butt? Yeah, a little bit. Why? It, it's a little too big. It's a little too big. I, the, it was my doctor did an amazing job, but. It's a little too big. You know what, though? I wasn't, Give it time. I know. You're still swimming. I'm only two weeks out. So That's I'm only not, two weeks are out. Are you sure you don't want a, a booty pillow? No. Because I, sure? I really want to get rid of it. And they, the, the, they told me, they're yeah, I'm like, <laughs> fucking sit on it. Dude, I had to buy clothes today and I had to go two sizes up because uh, I because it pops yeah. out too much. It the does. Butt. And I'm not going to lie. I, I wasn't going for a badonk, you know? Pretty oh. much just like inflated it again. Inflated it. Yeah. yeah. Because it was colgando. It was really Shit. bad. I was 320 pounds. So imagine yeah. losing so yeah. much weight. And it made me feel insecure not that i show my ass or anything but right but I mean, still just i didn't even, like when i wanted intimate, to feel my age yeah, you know yeah. what i mean and so the, my first round um they couldn't do much lipo mm-hmm. because they did a tummy tuck right so yeah. i had to go in for a second so that way they could really <sighs> lipo me up snatch me up well mm-hmm. the good thing is that you recover like nothing yeah so i'm doing good but i really recovery. don't think your butt looks like big like that i'll show you i'll show you after right now (laughs) no really because well it's because i'm hiding it that's why i went two Um, sizes up and literally i cried yesterday like i literally cried because like um i was on the phone with my girl yeah and um actually for the podcast i was like oh i'm gonna dress up so i went to the mall yesterday yeah and dude the pants look so different on me no way was that your first time putting pants on that was my first time putting pants so like clothes like sweats and shit that don't have pockets you know yeah yeah you know girls know you know your pockets you want it to look very like leveled and nice on a girl's ass right yeah for guys it's It's different different. it's different you know my ass is popping out and it don't it don't look right (laughs) it don't look right you know (laughs) so i'm like fuck so i even i was crying to her i was like i have a podcast tomorrow and i was like dude i fucking regret it like i really regret it and i told her i'm going for round three but round three is gonna t- t- take out the ass. Yeah, you know, like, but I, so I could be jumping like that much. For me, yes, because I, I didn't want a badonk. I, right, I was literally just you were wanting, more getting like a boy butt. Yeah, yeah. A boy butt. I and mm-hmm. I told my surgeon, I was like, "Yo, I want like an athletic ass." Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I just like wanted a fit, butt. a fit butt, just so that way it didn't look the way it did. You right. Know? So I will say, you're still pretty fresh out of surgery. Mm. My butt, when I first was fresh out of surgery, dude, ginormous. I felt the same way that you do. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay. And then it went away, but I had to lose more weight for it to, like, go down, down. Yeah. I lost maybe, like, 30 pounds after my surgery. Oh, shit. And so now you like your ass? Yeah. Now I kind of want... More? Now you want more. Now you want more volume, huh? (laughs) Now mine is kind of, you know, it's a little droopy now. I'm a mom now, you know? Um, So... But am I down? I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. I'm just scared now. You don't get scared of like dying? Of course. You know what? And that's what wifey was telling me yesterday. She Mm -hmm. was like, I don't think you should go under the knife again. And and I yeah, and and me too. And I was scared because I was like, dude, this is my third surgery. That's a little scary. That's scary, you know. And then not only that, like body dysmorphia. It's a thing. It's personally, I feel like when when I have gotten surgery, because I've had my chin done, my boobs done, my butt done. Um, what else have I had? I think that's it. But I end up more fucked up mentally after the surgery than before the surgery, if I'm being 100% honest with you. 100. And you know what? Like, I'm, I'm very happy in my skin now. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, because going from 320 right. pounds to what I am now, I love my body. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. But I, I'm not perfect, mm-hmm. and I don't like that. You know, like I don't, I don't like that mentally for somebody who was big and hated themselves, mm-hmm. and then getting to kind of semi where you want to be, right? And then noticing all of the flaws, 
even after surgery because yeah. fucking surgery ain't magic bitch like no, it ain't magic it's not you know and a lot of people think after surgery you're gonna be in love with yourself mm -hmm. yeah of course for the first, like you are you are but then but you, you notice more. new things and then you're like oh well i don't like this or i don't this or i don't that yeah. you know what i mean yeah and trust me men are just as conscious of their body as women but it's just for society for society standards men cannot they don't express vocal. it oh they don't express it you know yeah. how many guys have been in my dms that are straight men with kids and whatever and they hate their bodies and they're like dude i don't want a bbl but send me your but even if they want bbls dude who cares yeah and, it's and not that's... like you're gonna walk out with the kim kardashian ass girl yeah. like you know i, no, I wish true. it was more normalized it's crazy because my doctor this last surgery mm -hmm. my first surgery he didn't know what i did okay. and until my videos went viral and mm. his his um workers were like telling him about me mm -hmm. and then i scheduled my second surgery he was like i've never done that many males before and i have so many males now coming in for consultations and booking their surgeries no because way. of you he's like you're the first male person that i yeah. well no he's done like a few males but a but straight a, male a, a straight male that yeah. actually is like an influencer right, or has right. a reach right and he's like i couldn't believe it you know and he and so there's a lot of males now going to him which well, is dope good. it's really good and there's and like i said society standards yeah. you know it's and that's why those videos of mine went viral because yeah. it's not quote unquote normal it's not the norm it's not the norm but it's fuck not. the norm <laughs> right no <laughs> you yeah. know fuck the I norm because that, dude. because like when i was going through my whole depression yeah also too the reason why i wasn't posting was because i was afraid of the backlash uh -huh. that i was gonna get yeah because even with my first kid my second kid i was still doing makeup mm -hmm. you know and i would get backlash and it would scare me it would terrify me like yeah. oh my god if it did pop off where am i gonna go mentally with this yeah. because at that point in time I was so depressed that I did give a fuck what people exactly. said and and it hurt and stuff. Yeah, and it does. Words mm -hmm. hurt. It doesn't matter. Do. I, I know a lot of people want to say, oh, "Well, words don't." Or what is that saying? That words. I don't know. Words, words don't hurt, don't or mean stones anything. hurt, or something yeah, like that, yeah. right? But no, words hurt. They do, especially. In I mean, the we're human. Yeah, what we're the fucking heck? human, and especially when videos go viral. And even now in public, dude, like I get the faces. No way. I get faces, especially when I'm with my kids. Like when you're in glam um with, with glam and without glam you know what really? i mean yeah because i don't really go out like with makeup with my kids right i, I really only go to like makeup events like oh, okay. you know when it's appropriate for my work right, you know what i mean because right. i'm not a glam boy all right. day every day i'm okay. actually i'm more of a dad than anything right. you know outside outside of social media uh -huh. um i fell into the beauty space by accident you know what do you mean yeah so i wasn't i never so was into glam plan. no it wasn't really so i was a dancer actually okay. for many years a competition dancer so all throughout high school middle school i was a dancer okay. and so for our performances we actually had to glam up because it's stage mm, you know what right. i mean and so that's how i i started the whole glam thing was mm -hmm. with um some of the dancers you know be like oh can you do my help me you know You're like, okay yeah and i was naturally good at it in high right. school and like I said, I was, I had very low self-esteem uh -huh. because I was always with, um, my, my crew was the popular crew, you okay. know, in high school, but they didn't know I was in special classes. Oh, so throughout shit. my whole life, I was actually in RSP classes, uh -huh. which is classes for people who have IEPs, you right. know, and which means, you know, they're on the spectrum right. or, you know, they just have issues. So yeah. it gave me a lot of anxiety. It gave me a lot of depression mm -hmm. and it gave me a lot my self-worth wasn't there you so know, you're I, practically hiding from I was your hiding. own friends i was hiding i was hiding and that sucks you know and it sucks because um throughout high school people would always ask me where were you we didn't see you in class or because i was always in a separate, separate class separate right. area separate classrooms right and i couldn't tell them you know because i didn't want to be like not an cool, outcast an outcast yeah. or whatever the case was right that's crazy dude yeah well i'm sorry to hear that but you know if you guys are watching right now and if you guys have any type of disabilities or anything like that dude don't think any less of yourself at all at all that makes you you okay it, it does and now looking back at it um like i said it was just about a lot of it was through childhood stuff right childhood stuff and look at me now yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like aha you know like a lot of people who um 
didn't believe in me. You know, a lot of people would tell me, stop posting already. You're not popping off. Right. I would get comments. I would get messages. I would get people yeah, for screaming sure. that in the mall. Like mm-hmm. a, a couple of times that's Shut happened. Shut up. Literally, like just to hate, just to hate, you know. Mm-hmm. People are so nasty, dude. Genuinely so nasty. But you know what? Fuck you, bitches, because he's here now. I'm here, bitch. Yeah. Uh, I'm here to bitch. stay. <laughs> exactly. Dude, and literally last year, my biggest milestone was TikTok. And I got banned on TikTok because <gasps> of the haters shut up yeah because they kept reporting you got blocked yeah i got blocked like your whole page got deleted my whole page got deleted dude i was uh, working with this one brand literally i hit i was about to hit 300k Mm -hmm. and every video that i was posting was viral like it's i was getting momentum and uh a big brand reached out to me right Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna say the brand yeah and um i signed a contract Okay. It was good. It was going to be a good check for the next year yeah. for content. Okay, check for the next year. For the next That's year. Huge. It was a 12-month contract. Wow. And literally days after I signed that contract. No, no, no. 30 days after I signed that contract, mm-hmm. my TikTok got banned. <sighs> and so when I submitted it to the to that brand. Did you talk about this on TikTok? I did. Okay, I think I, did, I saw. Okay. Yeah, I uh-huh. did talk about it. And when I reached out back to the brand, um, at least for the first month's check, you know, because it was out for more than 30 days. And that's what my obligation was. Mm -hmm. A certain video had to be out for 30 days and then you get payment. Right. They were like, oh, well, unfortunately, because your TikTok was banned, um, we're not going to. But it had already been up for 30 days. Exactly. You know what I mean? And then it got deleted. And they're like, we'll appeal it and then come back to us. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, at least pay me for the 30 days. You know, right. like, I understand. You, you know, already it's a did your content. It, it's a business, you know. Right. And so I got ghosted. I got <sighs> ghosted. Um, I It got permanently banned. Um, and I had to start from scratch. But you know what, though? Sometimes, for me personally, like, I can't even appeal them. Like, if I appeal them, it'll still be like, no. Because I think when you have so many people like reporting your shit, Mm -hmm. they kind of just don't even like give a fuck, which is so annoying because, girl, when you go on TikTok, dude, I have seen literal porn on TikTok before and their accounts do not get blacked. And, dude, I have even tried to like report their shit and it gets denied. All my shit is all family oriented and makeup. You know what what I mean? Like, Like, it's nothing that I should be restricted about or get banned. And I appealed it. I emailed them. And, dude, TikTok is all robots. Mm -hmm. It is. And that's what sucks. I drove from San Diego (laughs) to their fucking TikTok headquarters. Let me in. Dude, I was crying. (laughs) Dude, my brand, it took a hit. Mm -hmm. That was my first year I popped off and then getting it taken away. And So when did this happen? That was last year in like, I would say like June, July. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, but you know what? Um, so anyway, I didn't get my, my account back. Okay. I had to start from scratch because TikTok, when I got to their headquarters, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. You can't talk to nobody. <laughs> they said, talk to the head. They're like, fill, the, fill out this form and then. Shut up. Yeah. But you know what? Blessing in disguise. Right. Because TikTok was the only platform I had. Uh-huh. And now I got three platforms all at this around the same um, following, which is amazing because I got one platform removed, but now I have three. So yeah. I have Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And oh, you're that. on Facebook too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do like lives on there? Or? Uh, no, I actually just post videos on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, my videos. You should actually, start doing YouTube. I want, I want to, but like, I have like 40k on on YouTube mm-hmm. in the last 10 years, and I was like, dude, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. I wasn't popping off on on YouTube, YouTube. so it's that's a why I did it. It's harder, you know. But I do want to get into it, but mm-hmm. it's a lot more work too. Yeah, and I feel like with TikTok especially, everything's so easy and quick. Yeah. Where it's like you just film it, quick edit, yeah, yeah, and that's it. It's true. But it, I will say that on TikTok, even if you have like a, a strong fan base on there, I feel like it's always a hit or miss yeah. with post it's true because there is some videos that i'll post and it's like oh okay 500k or whatever and then there's other ones that's like oh a thousand dude it's the algorithm though too. it is dude so many of my followers are like i haven't seen you in a month wait I'm like, so what the video or the page that i follow now mm-hmm. the bling king that's yeah, the your official. new one yeah so yeah my old one was the bling king and oh, then that's shit. the one that got deleted and then so now i have on tiktok it's the blinking official how many followers are you at now um i'm at like 200 and something that's K. good though yeah it's good yeah I, and i came up fast on it because i year, think so. i'm like at what maybe four mm-hmm. no i think maybe three hundred thousand. Oh yeah <laughs> well, but but you know what the algorithm sucks though on tiktok right now you know it's just it and you know what i popped off on instagram 
crazy. I'm at 400, almost 500K. Really? Dude, in months. Uh, not even a year. Wow. Months. So that's why now I'm, I'm on Instagram a lot. I personally feel like I'm like blacklisted on Instagram. Mm. Because I don't know if you ever saw, but I used to do Area 69, the smoke show. Mm. Oh, so okay, I okay. was smoking on there a lot like every single week type mm-hmm. shit and not just a cute little hit it was like <laughs> smoking like girl like smoke you're smoke. blazing on there Bla- <laughs> blaze the fuck out like blaze the fuck out and i genuinely feel well it got to a point the reason why i ended area 69 the smoke show is because it got to a point where instagram literally was like if you do one more thing wrong your whole account is gonna be deleted dude so and I you was worked like, so hard that. for that and exactly. you worked so hard for it i've had that account mm-hmm. since i was what maybe 15 14, 15, like, mm-hmm. girl, I'm not going to do that. So I stopped doing that. But now, dude, I lose so many followers every single day. Like, I don't know what it's like to grow followers. Yeah, mm-hmm. it sucks. Literally, I was growing thousands of followers um, and thousands. I was mm-hmm. so shocked because Instagram, you know, that it went for a while. It was not hitting. Instagram, no, it wasn't. It was dead. Yeah, and as then fuck. It was dead as fuck. And then so what I started doing was posting my TikToks onto my your reels onto my reels and they started popping off more Mm -hmm. than tiktok now so i sticked with it um but i don't know recently they had like a crash i don't know do you remember when they had a crash maybe like a month ago and it was down for like hours i don't know so instagram it was down for like maybe like three four hours and after that i'm no longer getting um i'm no longer i'm I'm still getting my views um but i'm not growing anymore because (sighs) of that so it fucked sucks. it up. I was like, fucking shit. I feel like Instagram is always crashing, though. Honestly, yeah. that mm-hmm. shit's annoying. But my my reels on Instagram actually get way more views than TikTok, TikTok as well. Yeah. Bitch, I got a, a present for you, too, from my brand. Bad and bougie, bitch. Stop it. Bad and it's and a bougie. big box, girl. Yeah, it's a big ass box, okay? Oh, my gosh. Should I open it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm like, is there powder puffs in here? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, good. I gave you a little bit of everything. Iconic. So this is literally everything that you sell. Yeah. Okay. Almost everything. Yeah. Almost everything. Almost. Okay. You guys aren't going to see too, too well, but I'll be sure to add like yeah. a little clip. <gasps> oh, mm-hmm. dude, these. Mm-hmm. Iconic. I love half lashes. Yeah, those are my my most sellers. Yeah. Queen Bee. Queen Bee is my, because it's the half, half lash. Everybody loves that one. Dude, these give you like the perfect cat eye. Mm-hmm. Like perfect. Honestly, these are the only lashes that I wear that are like full strip. Yeah. They're from Shein. Mm. I've just been obsessed, honestly. And you guys always ask me. They're from Shein. But these are definitely my go-to. The little yeah. half end, because I've noticed that the full lash strip makes my eyes look kind of like lazy. Oh, yeah. You, you get a little I mean? droopy eye. Yeah, uh-huh. droopy eye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, girl. We got more lashes. There's a lot. Dude, th- there is a lot in here, girl. We're not going to be able to go through everything right no. here. But, dude, because these need like a full little close-up moment. But, girl, mm-hmm. you gave me your whole store. Dude, I did. Dude. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that, bitch. Look at that bitch. And that shit's deep. <laughs> yeah, it's deep, bitch. <laughs> okay, so I'll have to show you guys no in the story because mm-hmm. I didn't think it was going to be that. <laughs> much but thank you i really no, appreciate, you. I appreciate that you. dude i love makeup i love it's makeup it really it's therapeutic, is huh? mm. so do you love it or are you kind of just more like no i love makeup like i said i fell into it by accident um once high school was done with um dance was over yeah. i couldn't get the help from my parents to go to, to school you know and um because they made too much money and they just didn't want to help me like for college or for college you know i did i wanted to go to college but i also knew that i would struggle so much in college because of my you know my um my mental state you know the learning disabilities that i had at that time and Mm -hmm. etc so it's expensive as hell and it's expensive thank god i didn't go to college though to be honest i went Uh, for like two weeks and i dropped out (laughs) and got my lips done (laughs) yeah and here we are now yeah and so yeah so after that since i was a natural makeup i just kept going at it and then eventually people in um in my senior year were like can you do my makeup for prom and i was like sure so then it started that little business yeah. and i was like fuck i can so you actually were freelancing make money in high I, was, school. I was already freelancing um in that's the 12th iconic. grade and so that's what started it mm-hmm. and right after i just kept doing it and doing yeah. it and then i worked at sephora for a little bit and then so it just happened right it wasn't that i already loved makeup or nothing right it was uh it literally just happened like that and so i had to make a business out of it because 
if I wasn't going to school. And right. I, and I like, already knew. what are you going to do? Nine to five jobs weren't for me. Right. I have ADHD as well. So it's like the repetition and, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't, like the, I didn't like yeah. it. I just, yeah. it wasn't for me. And so, yeah, now I'm here. I'm booked until next year. Like, I Iconic. have booking. Like, I'm always driving out to L.A., it's for a like blessing. Weddings, yeah, it's a yes, blessing. Yeah, I proms, do anything. Yeah, baby showers, literally everything, right? Mm-hmm, everything. So, if you had a choice, mm-hmm. what would you be doing instead of makeup? I've always wanted to be a therapist. Oh, really? I did, and um, it's still it was still a dream of mine. Uh-huh. You know, don't get me wrong. I would need to go back to school for that. Yeah, though. for sure, for um, sure. Because I had a horrible, horrible childhood. Yeah. So, I've always wanted to be a therapist. You should. I mean, maybe in the future. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because makeup's not going to last forever. You know what I right. mean? I mean, at least. I mean, I think it, makeup will forever be a thing. Yes. But maybe your passion for it won't be mm-hmm. there anymore. Be bigger. And yeah. I'm not going to be a 50 year old doing makeup. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, that too. That you know, too. like uh, for now, it's it's doing what it is. Yeah. Hopefully, I can leave the business to my daughters and my kids or you whatever. Should. Uh, I really want to. So, my my daughters um, and my oldest son, mm-hmm. they love it. They're like, Dad, teach me so I can work Aww. with you. You know, and it's funny because um my daughter is like dad can you buy me a makeup vanity table oh, so that way when cute. you're doing the mom i can do the daughter oh. you know like she she already wants to make money and she's like please teach me dad you, you know like she loves her. it yeah no I, I, I am i definitely am and she loves makeup she loves she's my she's the hardest person that reps me <laughs> she's my number so one cute. supporter it's funny because the teachers at school at the parent parent teacher conferences mm-hmm. i didn't know this but um, my daughter stole some of my my um what do you call it? Your makeup? My no my um my little flyers oh, and okay. my business cards mm-hmm. and was handing them out to the <laughs> teachers, handing them out to the students, telling them to give it to their mom so they can She's go like, to their salon. Dad. Yeah, they're like, Yeah, you know, it's really cool. It's a really cool. Funny story, um, like two months ago, my daughter for days was asking me and was like, Dad, please, can you drop me off on the blacktop, right? Which Uh is where you have to get off, you know, and drop them off. But I drive and leave them, you know, and they go (laughs) into the gate. Yeah, they walk in themselves. But for weeks, she was like, Dad, I really want you to, you know, come in and drop me off on the blacktop. And I was like, no, baby. Like walk in with me. Yeah, and I I, I wasn't understanding, but I didn't question her at all. Right. And because I have my older, my youngest daughter, uh-huh. and she goes to a different daycare. Oh, okay. So I was like, then I'll have to take her out of the dang car seat, get You're the like, stroller. It's a mission, girl. It's a mission, yeah. you know. Uh-huh. And I felt bad, but then I um, found out. She was like, Dad, it's because all my friends want to meet you. Oh. Um, you know, and I was like, what? Mm-hmm. And then literally, the, the, she was like, Yeah, all of my friends love your makeup, your videos. How cute. Their mom and dad watches, and they, my dad's famous. And I was <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> she's like you're a star dad yeah and and then we were at the teacher the ter- the, the, the parent, parent teacher. teacher conference and she's like yeah she tells everybody about you um, and you know she's always telling us to go get our makeup done with you and mm. whatever and she has picture day so yeah. i obviously you know i let her put a little bit of lipstick on yeah. a little bit of my liquid blush yeah. so she and can't really wear makeup yet no 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 uh, she wears it yeah. like she plays like with little it cute stuff. yeah like yeah. little cute little girl stuff Mm-hmm. Um, and she just loves it. She's just my number one supporter. Cute. Yeah, it's dope, dude. And your wife must be so happy to have a man that can glam her up. Yes, because I see your TikToks like doing mm-hmm. her hair, her makeup, and stuff. Dude, that's iconic. Yeah, I even told my man, I was like, "Look, babe, like you need to learn how to do my makeup." And he was actually so down. He was yeah. like, "Yeah, I could do it." I could do it, but it's because he, he has such a big ego that he's yeah, like, yeah. if you say that I can't do it, I could fucking do yeah, it. Yeah, he's going to prove you fucking wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he did my makeup for a video, actually, and girl. How'd it come out? A mess. A mess. <laughs> but he understands the concepts. Okay. And that was his first time ever even touching a makeup product mm-hmm. and applying it, you know? Yeah. So I feel like if he really practices it, I think he can get there, Yeah, dude. he can. He can. Dude, there, there's so many guys. Because he's on- a painter. Oh, so even even more, of, right. it, it does. Like it, your job, that job will help him. Right, it, it's crazy. Yeah. It'll help him. Yeah. It, it will help him. He just needs to practice a little yeah. bit, and he he'll get it down. That's iconic, though. So, do you get your girl ready, like for everything, or is no, it kind of like occasions? No, it's just occasions. It's really, and you know what? To be honest, she's not a glam girl. Oh, she's not. She's not a glam girl. Really? She's the opposite. She's, so she's bare she's, queen. Yeah, she's bare queen. She, oh, shit. But you know what? It has a lot to do with having four kids. 
yeah I you mean, know what i mean time for you yeah. know and even then by the time she were, were well she's finished with all four of the kids she's already like over it. she's like nah she's like let's just fucking go let's and go let's get the day let's done. go let me do the little mom chong i get it you know i get that mm-hmm. shit i get it but i do glamour up for like um events you know like christmas and like um like just holidays special and holidays stuff. and occasionally you know if we're gonna do something then yeah. i'll get her ready because literally i can beat her face in like 15 minutes a full glam Full fucking glam. So you can do your makeup in 15 minutes. Too. Hell yeah. I could do it like a good 20 minutes and I'll have a full cut crease, liner. Oh, I'll have... What? Because yeah. dude, he pulled up and he was mm-hmm. like, do you want me to get in glam? And I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. He was mm-hmm. like, do you want me to get in glam? And I was like, oh, it's up to you. Whatever you want, you know? But in my head, I came down the stairs and I was like, I wonder if he was going to get it done like in 10 minutes or Yeah, something, literally. Cause... I could do it real quick. Damn. Why, how long do you take on your makeup? Mm-hmm. Like... <laughs> I would say maybe 45. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even then, I feel like that's really short for me because mm-hmm. I normally take, well, before I had a kid, I would take maybe two to three hours. Oh, shit. Yeah. Those were the days, though. Those hey, were the motherfucking days. Those fucking were the days. days when we're just experimenting yes. and just fucking having fun and living life. Yeah, dude. Like you were able to try new little techniques mm-hmm. and stuff. Oh dude i miss those days i miss those days but i love these days as well it's true so how does your family your wife and your kids feel to have a glam dad that's in the beauty industry i mean i know your daughter loves it yeah (laughs) yeah yeah my kids love it um um, wifey she does not care she actually already knew that i was doing makeup before we even dated oh really yeah and you know what it's what's funny is i actually try to hide it from her because well because uh not many girls at, at that time right. you know because we've been together 10 years now oh, so okay. um at that time it was the, kind of a little taboo it, it was little, it was very taboo yeah. at that time you know and still i was trying to figure out what the hell what avenue i was going to go in right. and um so i deleted all my content of makeup just to like um before she like were to see it yeah. and we actually met at walmart so shut we, up yeah we you were both, shopping or what no we're, we're i was working there so i was oh, working at shit. walmart and she came in one day and i saw her literally i just wow. saw her hair her blonde hair mm-hmm. from the back and i, I love blonde hair yeah. so anyway so <laughs> i and then when she turned around she was really beautiful at that yeah. you know at that too so i didn't think i had a chance with her yeah. i really didn't you know and um what happened i started deleting all of my my makeup from my facebook and my instagram so were you (laughs) did you already hit on her yeah i was already hitting on her and flirting with her because Mm -hmm. i was gonna train her as a cashier because i was already there she was coming in as a newbie oh okay okay she was trying to work there mm -hmm, yeah so she got the job she comes to the register and asks like oh um where's this particular manager and so immediately i started it was like oh hi what's up how are you you know (laughs) and um it was funny because right after that i already knew i was like okay if i even try to hit on her i need to delete my makeup you know um long story short we're flirting and um i really tried really hard to get with her Mm -hmm. and one day we're in the mcdonald's at walmart and uh, she was like you know i already know right and i was like know what and like your then stomach drop? dude butter you know those the the gut when it drops yeah. and you're like oh it's like a fucking roller coaster like, dude thing. i was like fucking fail yeah. you know let me stop here you're you know? like i'm over here trying to act all hard yeah and stuff. you know i was trying to like really get get at her yeah and she was like yeah you know i already know and i was like know what and she's like i already know you you do makeup yeah she's like i like your makeup and i was like oh, oh really and uh so yeah that's how uh, we started it and we wore like these blue vests Mm -hmm. and i was like oh so you know chopping it up and i was like oh what kind of guys do you like or what Uh, you know like 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 me right yeah yeah (laughs) no literally and she was like oh i like this guy named junior and he's wearing a vest and he's sitting in front of me and i was like are you fucking playing with me yeah i was like dude like a little kid you know i was like Uh nah like She's fucking with me, yeah. you know, like what girl's going to be into a guy that does makeup and right. she knows about it beforehand. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, that's uh, wifey. She doesn't care about it. That's she iconic, loves it. though. She loves She it. sounds like a really great woman because I mm-hmm. understand for me personally, that's not really like a turn off or I won't question it or anything like that. But a lot of women would. would. Yeah. And, 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 and that's fine, would. you know, to each their own. Right. You know what I mean? But it works for our relationship, Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm blessed. I'm super blessed to have her in my life because I have never met somebody that was so open to that. 
like open minded. Open minded, mm-hmm. you know, in that sense, and would fucking just accept me. Right. Like your parents, like were mm-hmm. they like opposed to you like doing makeup and things like that? Like did you ever get mm-hmm. questioned for it? From my dad. Oh. So my dad and so my parents, my childhood mm-hmm. um was really rough. Mm-hmm. Very rough. And um I lived I never had a home really. Mm-hmm. So I was homeless my whole life. And when I say that, what I mean is I never had like a healthy home or oh, okay. a place to call home. Like a safe place. A, a safe, safe place. haven yeah. haven or whatever you want to call it. You know, my parents were addicts. I talk about it oh, a shit. lot. You know, I was, um, I didn't have a relationship with my parents. Right. Even till now, it's crazy because my parents, uh, collectively, they have seven kids, you wow. know. And, um, you know, we have a very dysfunctional family. Mm-hmm. It, it's funny because I always say like, oh, um, we're the Mexican shameless. I don't know if you've ever seen I've that show. I've never seen that. Okay, so it's literally like such a dysfunctional family in the okay. show. But that's how we were. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have a relationship. You know, they never really cared to ask mm-hmm. what was my goals, what was my dreams. So you were kind of just doing your own thing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Literally. And even now, like you still don't really have like a great relationship with it's them? It's better um it's better now but not really Mm -hmm. you know it's just it's it's so disconnected that unfortunately i love my parents you know i love i love but um there's just a lot of trauma there there's a lot of trauma you know especially and i forgive them now you know like because i I understand i'm a i'm a dad now i'm older i've been to therapy for many many years um but yeah there's just a lot of trauma and you can't really get through to um when there's addiction involved you can't really get through to people yeah you know, and uh, my childhood was horrible because I was raped for many years. Really? Yeah. So for many years, I was raped um, and molested. So I had to overcome a lot in my childhood life. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it started at the age of eight all the way to the 13. That's really, really hard. But just know that everything that you've been through doesn't define you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're a greater person. And now with your kids, you know how to be there for them. You know how to help steer them into a better direction. Just be more aware and stuff like that. Because, dude, like, that shit's scary. It is. And, you know, like, and those are the videos that went viral when I do talk about things Mm -hmm. like that. Because people, unfortunately, can relate to it. But also, you're not alone, unfortunately. (laughs) It's so sad how common that stuff is, Yeah, And that's why I'm very open to talk about, Mm -hmm. like, you know, because everyone always asks me, your sexuality, what is it? Mm -hmm. What They want to know, what is it? You're a man in makeup, but um, with a wife, you know. Well, we're not legally married yet. We've been together 10 years, but we're going to get married next year. Anywho. Yeah, but, you know, and everyone always has questions about that. And I'm very open to it, you know, as long as it's asked in a, respectful respect way. respectful way you know because everybody has a journey mm-hmm. and my molestation and whatever i went through mm-hmm. that's my story and that's how i got to where i'm at now mm-hmm. you know and people can judge it however that people are gonna judge it no matter what right, right. um but when you're when you come from that it fucks up your whole world you know, and you go through experiences and you want to, especially as a male. Right. Definitely. I had I had my fair share of experiments, mm-hmm. you know, experimenting um, and going that route for mm-hmm. a while. And I had to figure out what was it. Mm-hmm. But I was molested since eight to the age of by 13 a by a male, mm-hmm. by someone in the family. So you, you know? feel like it kind of just fucked you up mentally? It did. It like fucked me up mentally. You were confused. I was. I was yeah. confused for a, a while, yeah. you know. Um, we're in therapy w- w- one day, and I was, like, feeling a type of way about it. And my therapist was like, everything you are exper- ex- experienced is um, not justified, but it's how can you not be um, confused? You know what I At mean? At that young of an age, dude, mm-hmm. not knowing anything about sex, not knowing nothing about nothing, mm-hmm. and that happens, dude... It- you're bound to be confused yeah and and it, and it follows you you guys it doesn't yeah. just leave you know it, it actually stays with you you know i've been in therapy for six years and it's been the hardest thing you know how hard it is to tr- retrain your mind especially when it's already fucked up be- yeah. and and it's fucked up because of whatever of your experiences in life and 
um, whether it's your parents or whether it be molested or right. whatever, your mind is already corrupt. Yeah. So the hardest battle was my mind. Mm -hmm. Are you still in therapy? No, I actually just stopped therapy. Thank oh, okay. God. Well, not thank God, but just <laughs> like um, what I mean by that is like my therapist was like, I think you're at a point where we can, oh, you know, iconic. like, you, you know, you pick up on these tools and tools are, you know, identifying problems right. when you're emotionally getting to the breaking point, mm -hmm. like, you know, being aware, mm -hmm. you know, and just knowing that all of the tools that you learn in therapy, you take it with you. And that's the goal. You so know? you feel like therapy actually helped? Oh, you. hell yeah. One thousand really? percent. Yeah. If I didn't have therapy, I wouldn't even be where i'm at right now yeah. to be honest i think therapy is something that i wish well that i want to consider but mm -hmm. i i just you know i just get scared because i'm like what if they know me what mm -hmm. if you know like i i just don't want to be judged i don't want to mm -hmm. nothing like that yeah no it's been hard yeah well uh well legally they, they won't be able to you right. know they won't but be able to do know, that even yeah. if it's legal you know you know um, how that goes. yeah no it's true because uh, you know the details that my therapist knows uh, it goes deep y'all like it, it goes super deep like yeah. you if you're going to therapy and you really want to heal you have to open up entirely entirely 100%. otherwise you're gonna be putting band-aids on little issues exactly. that you know like I, I always call it the false truth mm -hmm. because in the beginning i was i was um only literally like telling my therapist um what i wanted her to know because if i literally opened up like literally cps got called on my parents one time yes because i was opening up about they my trauma you, that. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i understand what you're saying like yeah. it, it gets to that point and it caused problems with my family oh, you know dude. because i was living with my parents right and they're like did you call and i was like you're nope like, no i didn't i didn't but i really knew down in my gut i was like oh my god like and then and then that sucks because when that happens you're like then you feel like oh i can't open up now you know so I that's like, exactly how i felt because i did attempt to go to therapy and this was maybe what like mm, like five years ago around there and the therapist told me right away like i just want to let you know that anything you say like if you name names or anything like that i do have to like report things if mm -hmm. it's like extreme things you know yeah so as soon as she told me that i was like oh girl oh I, I girl just, then how are you gonna be able to help me yeah, bitch thank you. how are you exactly. gonna be able to help yeah, yeah like no. i'm trying to fix my brain not make things even harder yeah. you know so mm. that was the reason why i stopped therapy because i was like i just I, I can't like i can't like you're asking me to be honest but like not fully honest but if i'm honest there's things that come yeah. out of being honest yeah you know? so then i can't even get the help exactly it, it comes down to that i can't even get the help yeah. you know and obviously we know like if a child's being hurt or right. something of course but um you, they didn't have to report everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're you like, know, I'm older now. Yeah, I'm older you know? now. Yeah. Like, why Why now? Right. You know? Like, where were you years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. like, even, like, when you tell, told me earlier, like, I'm not boring. I'm not a boring person yeah. at all. Like, I'm high on life now, mm -hmm. right? But, like, when you asked me, like, oh, are you going to drink? Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of lied to you. I was like, oh, I can't drink. It's not uh -huh. that I, I... I just didn't want you to be, like, uh, to judge me. What? I don't know you because can tell me no, it's okay. yeah, but it's because uh, my dad he was an alcoholic, and oh. then my mom she was on drugs. So right. I don't I don't smoke weed, I don't vape, I don't nothing. So I, I, I'm not I'm not against it. Right, I don't do it because I have so much trauma from it right. that I just that's not that's yeah. not what I do. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but don't get me wrong, I'm not against it. I'll party with people. Yeah. I'm I'm high on life. Like, does your wifey drink? She she drinks. She'll okay. occasionally drink, but mm -hmm. she's not a she's actually not a smoker or a drinker either. That's we good don't, though. you know, like yeah. we literally just take our kids places. Like that's iconic. Like like that's literally my life. Like I live just to and I really really work really hard just to provide for them, mm -hmm. you know, and like give them a life that I didn't. Right. You know, like because it's so important and my kids deserve it. Well, you're building a future for them. Yeah, well. and you know what? All of the shit that I went through as a child has made me the dad that I am today. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying like I'm grateful for everything that happened, right. but in a sense, like it got me to where I am. And you know what? We all have a purpose. It, things happen for a reason. Exactly. And not that that was supposed to happen or mm -hmm. anything like that, but I think you should be proud of yourself for flipping your trauma 
exactly. into something better. Yeah. Even though that sounds no, 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 I it know. sounds weird to mm-hmm. say that because I, I don't I wish I could take all of that away from you, all your traumas and stuff. Mm-hmm. But do you know what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, like, no, I get it. You made something better out of it because you could have easily just been stuck. Yeah, and like literally, like I was destined to be doomed literally like at least in the family that i was you know raised in and what we were going through at the time from being you know like my brothers were cholos all my mm-hmm. family were cholos mm-hmm. we would get shot at our at our shut house up. like literally like it was yeah it was oh, that shit. era i've been shot at one time you know like i've what? talked about that yeah uh, it didn't hit me or nothing but they did a drive by to. you know and stuff like from literally from the gang life from my family from my parents being addicts and just neglectful and not there, you know. And then, um, you know, there was a lot of DV with my parents. Um, And then me being molested and raped for so long, me being confused, me being on the spectrum and having, uh, you know, like mental disabilities Mm -hmm. um, and all of that. Like I had a lot against me, Mm -hmm. you know, and I came out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the most that's why I'm so proud. Yeah. You I know, mean, like really it, it, it is, it is. It's so hard. And like my therapist was like mind blown because she was like, I cannot like literally I thought like she was like in over her head to help me because mm-hmm. I thought like nobody can help me. And it was too much because th- our first couple sessions, I saw her lot. face. She was like, this is work. Yeah. This is, it, it's a lot, yeah. you know, it goes very deep, Yeah. but I'm happy to be where I'm at now. You know what I mean? And it, uh, everything happens for a reason. And I'm just glad to be resilient, you know? And and you got that power from within yourself to just move forward, push forward. And every day, you're still going to have to do that every, every day. single day. And, and it's a battle now. You yeah. know, it, it's, it's a tough battle mm-hmm. every day. It doesn't matter how much therapy I go through. It doesn't erase the pain. Right. Um, it or does. The memories you know. Or and anything. I don't want to burst anybody's bubble or anything, yeah. but there's no such thing as closure. Right. You just learn to deal with it. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. You just ha- learn. You you learn these new tools, how to regulate your emotions, mm-hmm. how to be accountable, how to you know identify mm-hmm. your own issues too. But I think that's good to emphasize because mm-hmm. I feel like when people think that they're going to get closure and they Mm. never get there yeah that's a whole nother fucking depression episode in itself when i got my body done the first Mm. time with the tummy tuck i had like a mental breakdown in my recovery home Really? yeah because i didn't see my body until i got to my recovery home right and since i was 320 pounds i actually all of that was all the pain from my trauma Mm. and um from being molested and raped for you know for a while Mm. and dealing with that mental shit right and I gained so much weight because of that Your trauma traumas. that when it was taken off of me, I had a mental breakdown. Like, I You're was like, like, where is it? Where is it? Like, mm-hmm. who am I? And I loved myself that day. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, my God. And I was bawling out crying because um, a lot of people don't realize that when you gain so much weight like that. 90 percent of the time it is because it's your trauma Mm -hmm. you're unhappy your mental state and etc and it was literally taken from me so you literally were crying because you were like my trauma's gone yeah like Uh, like i'm not gonna carry it yeah i I was rebirthed right now yeah like rebirth that's beautiful though uh, like imagine like i went from 320 pounds and down right Mm -hmm. and looking in the mirror and everything was colgando Mm -hmm. and i had a like realize like well, how did i get there mm-hmm. and it was because of all my trauma so it was like a reminder mm-hmm. for me you know like i was like oh check like almost? yeah like a reality check and shit so that's why i really needed it like and a lot of people i got judged so much for obviously my surgeries but people don't realize that it helped me tremendously with yeah. with my like self-confidence my self-worth um and everything because nobody wants to look at themselves looking like that right and right. be reminded of that nobody a thousand but people are always gonna have something to say about surgery mm-hmm. but honestly if you can do it go ahead you know make do whatever makes your heart happy mm-hmm. at the end of the day you can't sit here trying to please other people because you're never gonna reach that goal yeah you can never please everyone but yeah dude that's crazy mm-hmm. well i appreciate you coming on and talking about all of your traumas your journeys and all that stuff um you know if you guys don't already follow the blinking 
um your social medias are they all the same on everything yeah so on on instagram it's the blinking with double e and then on um tiktok it's the blinking official and then on facebook it's under bernardo macias okay because i'm verified on there so i have to have my legal name Uh, they won't let me have the blinking or nothing so yeah where did the blinking come from um, because I love bling. Like I, <laughs> literally, I well, it came from nails. So actually, oh, I you do nails. I yeah, I do nails. Yeah, I do nails. But I do very butchona nails. You know, oh, very long, and all of that. And so that's where the blinking came from. And then also too with my makeup, I do I do a lot of makeup with like crystals yeah. and shit like that. So. Well, hopefully soon you can do my nails know, because mm-hmm. maybe once my son is what maybe two three, <laughs> so I could get some really long ass nails. Because right now, girl, I cannot do nails at all. I do press-ons right now I'm really, I'm yeah. really do you do pop- press-ons no i don't um, i could for you <laughs> we should well i think it's just like the mm-hmm. like gel x yeah yeah the yeah. gel x yeah and then yeah. i just design them and That'd then send be them mm-hmm. tonight's episode was definitely a super juicy one okay so like i said if you guys don't already follow the blinking be sure to check him out on all platforms he's an icon we love him so much um send him a virtual hug we need hugs thanks booze yes so with that being said we love you guys so much and i will see you guys next sunday at 7 p.m peace